ago, this was most people's idea of rhythmic gymnastics, mass keep fit sessions with no competitive element. But in the last couple of decades, the sport of modern rhythmic gymnastics has developed to such an extent that it was a very popular part of the last Olympic Games in Los Angeles. Now, welcome to the Wembley Conference Centre, where we've got another major event in the development of the sport, the Silent Night Beds International, which perhaps brings together the best field that the sport has seen all season. We have got a couple of notable absentees. The Russians pulled out, and the talented North Koreans sadly were refused visas to enter the country. But we've still got 18 gymnasts who, between them, hold most of the world's major international titles. And that includes the reigning world champions, Bulgaria, and a British team with our own national champion, Jackie Levy. Now, the gymnasts compete over four elements, the club, the hoop, the ball, and the ribbon. And the first we're going to see is perhaps the very best in the world, the reigning world champion from Bulgaria, Diljana Georgieva. And our commentators are Monica Phelps and John Taylor. Well, Georgieva, beginning her competition with the ball. In the world championships, in the individual competition, she was the bronze medalist, joint with Rolinka. competitors look a little bit in another league but of course there's tremendous competition competition between the three girls here very close at the top of the world rankings finds and then still that incredible accuracy of throw look at the extension there Georgieva a magnificent start to her competition the world champion And what a cheer there for British champion Jacqueline Levy, Britain's number one performer from Coventry. Very unusual leotard with the V and high cut neck. dear. Losing the apparatus, she'll lose 0.1 for that. Let's hope she recovers her nerve. She didn't have time to very near the end and only a little slip, but otherwise a superb routine there from Jacqueline Levy. And Norway's only competitor, 18-year-old Ellen Gunderson. As many nations as possible will be thankful that they've been included in this very prestigious competition. One of the only competitions of its kind in Europe. But 
The judge is, of course, looking for complicated movements, but also different levels. The performer has to jump, roll, go close to the floor, handle the apparatus, throw the apparatus, spin it, and twirl themselves. that they keep the apparatus moving all the time. She did it, kept her rhythm, and be well pleased with that for a start. Jackie Levy, British champion, one of our main hopes here at Wembley this afternoon. Tell us a bit about your background in the sport. How did you actually get into modern rhythmic gymnastics? Well, I started off doing artistic gymnastics, and then when I was about 10, I went for a trial for the national team. And I got into the national team, and I've been in it ever since. So the ideal background for modern rhythmic is gymnastics itself were you a gymnast um well i did some tumbling and floor work and vault i think it's a good background because it gives you um agility and suppleness and you really need that for mrg and one thing you also need for mrg it seems to us here today an icy nerve do the nerves get too much in a situation like this mm, sometimes they do once i'm out there usually and i get into my routine i'm fine but I think nerves are good because they make you more cautious. If you haven't got any nerves and you're careless with the apparatus, and that's when you make mistakes. Went to Los Angeles, of course, for the Olympics. What kind of an experience was that for you? Oh, it was a really good competition. Very friendly, one of the most informal that I've ever been to, I think. I think that's probably because all the sports were there together. I didn't have a very good first day, but <laughs> my second day was much better. Mm. Were you able to gauge then, and were you able to gauge in this competition, exactly how far we are behind the rest of the world? Well, I think you'll be able to be able to see it quite clearly because the Bulgarians are so far ahead of everybody else. There's a lot of people on a similar standard in the middle, but there's certain certainly top few countries stand out. But we're catching up. I think so. <laughs> Good luck today. Thank Thanks you. So much. And another Bulgarian, Lilia Ignatova. This the world champion in the ball exercise, and she was silver medalist in the all-round event. Look at even the unusual start. The suppleness of these gymnasts is quite, quite extraordinary. almost looks as though it's got a magnet attached to her. A beautiful one and a half pirouette there into a balance. was just superb. I'm sure not many people have seen anything quite so beautiful performed in this country before. Well, now another of the great Bulgarians, Anelia Relenkova, joint silver medalist in the last World Championships in the overall competition, and she won the bronze medal for the ball.
extension and expression that the Bulgarians get into their movement are quite remarkable. And the precision of that throw, just a couple of degrees out and it would have gone astray. twists and turns, they're not allowed to actually complete gymnastic tumbles while the throws are in the air. Beautiful, perfectly executed, marvellous routine from Amelia Rolenkova. So after round one, it's the world champion Diljana Georgieva, level with her Bulgarian teammate Ignatova. Those two on 9.85, Rolenkova on 9.7, and the British girl Jacqueline Levy in fourth place on 9.1. Julie Ramsden from Great Britain, 21 years old, her second piece of apparatus, the hoop. scored 8.8 .8, using the ball so well down after the first round be anxious to climb up the places with this the hoop exercise getting her double roll in in time to catch the hoop before it hit the floor. That would be a point one deduction. <laughs> a beautiful control, a difficult ending. Diliana Georgieva from Bulgaria, joint leader at the end of the first round. And look at this sequence. And believe it or not, that was not tied to her feet. So simple, yet the maximum diameter of that hoop is just 90 centimeters. Wonderful change of position for the throws. Tremendous variety. for that originality. Almost threw it too far, but got it. A beautiful routine from Georgieva. Now, can that take her ahead of Ignatova, who scored 9.7 in her second round? Any better score than that, and she's in the lead. And this very attractive young girl is Kristin Fruvert, 15-year-old from West Germany. Quite a beautiful looking girl. And I'm sure with added experience of these major competitions, she could become quite a force to be reckoned with in the Western European nations.
Excellent interpretation. A little mistake there, but clearly well covered up. clever whether it was meant to be that or how unfortunate but how well recovered a very good effort there from the young west german Kristin Krubert. and this is bulgaria's anelia relenkova and she is lying in third place at the moment having scored 9.7 on her first piece but she's world champion on the hoop exercise so she could make a change in those positions notice the speed at which this girl works the catches the twirls never stops the confidence absolutely tremendous bouncing the hoop there and still knowing exactly where the catch comes from where they get the marks from above all of the other competitors because they use unusual body parts over which to roll the hoop and from which to throw the hoop. Oh dear, and that's a slip and that could cost her this championship. She really can't afford to make one slip with her two teammates, all world champions in their own right. At the halfway position, then after the hoop and the ball, the world champion Georgieva out in front on 19.7, leading from Ignatova Rolenkova in third place. But what a good performance from the two British girls, Jacqueline Levy and Lorraine Priest, together in fourth and fifth positions. We'll have more action from Wembley, the ribbon and the club's elements in just a moment. Welcome back to Wembley Conference Centre, the halfway stage in this silent night beds, Modern Rhythmic Gymnastics International, and really the Bulgarians having a bit of a private battle, filling the first three places, Georgieva leading from Ignatova and Rolenkova, but what a good performance from the British gymnast, Jackie Levy in fourth place, and Lorraine Priest fifth. And with me is the uh, British national coach, Jenny Bott. Jenny, you must be very pleased with that position at the halfway stage. Yes, I'm thrilled to bits. With 18 gymnasts competing, to have our number one and two up there, you know, fighting with the Bulgarians is really good. But how big a gulf is it between us and, and the Bulgarians at the moment? Well, there still is a gulf, obviously, but our girls are improving all the time, and we've got youngsters coming up who are also improving, and so this is good for the sport in our country. To reach this kind of level, in, in, in the British team certainly, what kind of dedication is required? What kind of training are these girls putting in? Oh, tremendous dedication and a lot of hard work and training and they're, they're working four, five, six times a week, all of course in their spare time. Now a lot of gymnasts, uh, young gymnasts perhaps watching at home, seeing modern rhythmic gymnastics at this level for the first time, what, what sort of basic talent do they need to, to become a good modern rhythmic gymnast? Well, I think you will have seen already, they need to be very supple indeed, very graceful and elegant and an ability to work with the body and with the apparatus and show a sense of rhythm and general appreciation for music. Lots of uh, talent is needed, really. Well, we've got our last two pieces of apparatus coming up now. The clubs and the ribbon will rejoin our commentators, Monica Phelps and John Taylor. Thank you. And Great Britain's Lorraine Priest, now with her club routine. She's doing very well at the moment, lying in fifth place. Leeds Athletic Institute and is coached by Anne Tallentine, who is in fact on the panel of judges today, so she'll have to please her own coach. Nice 
turning leap while swinging the clubs. tremendous memories to be able to remember four different routines with four different pieces of hand apparatus memorizing each intricate step nice audience participation here from the home crowd something that every competitor wants and what an unfortunate mishap at the very end of the routine. Just that slight loss of concentration and I bet she's mad with herself. And America's champion, Lydia Bree, she's lying in 11th place with her teammate at the halfway stage. Now the ribbon exercise. and catching the ribbon is the latest innovation in this exercise only in the last few years have they begun to release this hand apparatus and the tail of the ribbon must never remain on the floor it must always be in action exercise there from Lydia Bree. And this very striking Spanish girl, Monsa Manzanares, she's doing extremely well. She's up in sixth place, just behind the British girls. Had had a very consistent performance so far in the first half. This her third discipline, the ribbon. Opening with a throw and a bounce and a recatch. to be the most promising of the Spanish girls and I think that shows that she was the Spanish national junior champion and she also won all the individual titles that's very unusual and she's le certainly leading the field of the Spaniards today so she's really proving herself the ribbon the secret has to be rhythmic otherwise it suddenly gets tangled but this beautiful movement beautiful shapes and bounces again beautiful recatch <laughs> lovely exercise there from Malta Manzanares Bulgaria's Lilia Ignatova in second place at the moment only 0.15 behind her teammate, Georgieva. One thing I think remarkable about these three girls, they can't steal a march on each other. They all train at the Physical Education Institute in Sofia, all under Neshka Rebeva, the national coach. So there's no hiding. Any new moves come out straight away. And she's been watching them all through 
so she's their greatest critic and I'm sure their greatest admirer too. This girl has had a tremendous record since 81. She's won eight gold and eight silver medals in world and European championships. Simple move there to make the mistake on. These girls lead a very busy life. They only arrived in London from Tokyo yesterday and trained as soon as they arrived. They didn't have time for jet lag. So a little mistake, but otherwise a really amazing performance there. And Peter Machen encouraged onto the floor there from team manager Jenny Bott. Peter doing extremely well in this international championship. Precision needed that really does make this a sport and not just an art form. A marvellous performance there from Peter Machen. Well, Anelia Rolenkova from Bulgaria in third place at the moment. She was joint silver medalist in the last world championships with Lilia Ignatova. But at the moment, trailing her. Exercise. Will it be enough to put her ahead of Ignatova? And this 15-year-old Spaniard, the youngest girl in the competition today, is lying in sixth place. Monza Manzaneres, leading all of her teammates. The least experienced, but obviously the most talented. A real performer thoroughly enjoying demonstrating her skills on the floor.
suppleness. Really is very confident. You see why these Spaniards are doing so well in the world as well. They really have a positive approach. Quite a lot of showmanship from a very little girl. And British champion Jacqueline Levy, on her last discipline, she's held on to fourth place. She's scoring 27.45 after three disciplines. And to hold on to that place, she needs to do a good performance. Tremendous three throws there, right in the first 15, 20 seconds of her exercise. Really piling in the difficulty. It's good to see the British girls really looking to put as much content in as possible. Oh, she's really on good form. Alternate throws and catches from left to right hand. Superb, absolutely superb. And she certainly enjoyed it as well as the audience and ourselves. Yes, I think in her own competition, she's come first. She knew she couldn't catch the Bulgarians, and I'm sure that she'll be delighted with fourth place. Diliana Georgieva, the world champion, the very last person to go in this competition, and the contest between the Bulgarians has been so tight, she still needs 9.75. All the pressure on her, can she do it? Just watch the speed of this ribbon and the speed of her movements. All of the Bulgarians very fast moving in their routines. A tremendous high level of skill and activity. confidence there to take that behind her back. The hours and hours of practice paying off. In fact, an amount of skill is in the family because Diliana's mother was in the first ever modern rhythmic world championships back in 1963. There's no doubt that these three Bulgarians that we've been lucky enough to see here in London today would have dominated the Olympic Games in Los Angeles. Well, it looks faultless. I wonder if the judges think so. Well, I think that's no doubt about it. She must have held on to the first place, the true mark of a champion, all the pressure on her, but performed to perfection. And there it is, 9.9. .9. So the winner of the Silent Night Beds International, Diliana Georgieva. Three British girls in the top seven, but the three Bulgarians supreme. And Diliana Georgieva, the world champion, pulling out the highest score of the afternoon just when she needed it, 9.9 .9 to take the competition. Diliana, many congratulations. Was that your best form that we've seen today? I don't think so because uh, we are so tired from long traveling from Japan and now my head was a little bit <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I don't make today big mistakes only a little but audience don't know <laughs> <laughs> well we didn't spot yeah, any for only, sure only my coach know it right tell us a little bit about your training how much do you train every day 
Before big competitions like uh, World Championship or European, we're training five or six hours of the day. But uh, when we have not big competitions, two, three, three, four, I don't know, different. A lot of time. Diliana, many congratulations. You've delighted everyone here today. Thanks for Thank talking you. to us. So that's uh, the end of a, a first very successful Silent Night Beds International here at uh, Wembley. The good news is that the competition is going to continue for the next couple of years. So that's maybe a chance for Britain to close the gap on some of those amazing Bulgarians. From us all here at Wembley, goodbye.